Hi, this is Susan from Cochineal Design Studio and in this video I want to walk you through the process of building your first pattern in Garment Designer. I always suggest that you keep your silhouette simple, yet it can be fun, and to not go for a lot of internal detail on some of your first patterns. The real goal is to test the basic fit of the measurements that you took and also to learn the software and of course we want you to have a success with what you do. I usually like to start with some form of inspiration and I'm going to use this garment here which was a purchase top that I got that was for sportswear. I really just liked the drape of it. So here I'm holding out the sleeve so that you can start to see the shape of the garment and basically I usually start by doing a little bit of analysis so this is somewhat of a cap sleeve body with an extended sleeve onto it. It's got a wide round neckline. Uh, it's straight across at the bottom which allows it to angle drape down on the sides. Now I tried it on and I liked everything about it except that I wanted mine to be a little bit longer. The next step then is to get some numbers down on a piece of paper. I always suggest that you go into Garment Designer with some form of plan. And so here we are, I've drawn the flat of the garment. Uh, on the right side I added the sleeve, on the left side I did not, but of course I will when I make it. Uh, but basically I wanted my garment to be a little longer so I held the tape at my high shoulder down and measured it to be 25 inches. I used the garment as a reference to determine the neck width and the neck depth. And then I also used the garment somewhat as a reference for the width and the basic shape. And then between my, measuring my body and planning for a little bit of ease, I came up with the measurements that you see here. I made the end of the cap part of the body garment uh, six inches and then added a sleeve onto that. So now I'm in garment designer and I'm getting ready to build the pattern. Usually the first thing I do is put on the size that's closest to me if I don't already have my sloper in and the green is representing my body measurements in somewhat of a flattened mode and the black is the pattern that I want to build. So I'm pretty close to a standard petite size 10. I can go into the sloper and edit any measurements that are slightly different. So the bust is a little bit bigger and so is the waist and I'll just click OK. I can then save the sloper if I want and I will give this, call this Susan Edited and click OK and so now this is a custom sloper or I can just use a ready to wear size. Now we have all these style menus here and I'm going to start to build this garment simply by choosing some of the similar styles. So I'm going to leave uh, it as a basic so that I have a straight side seam. I want uh, the neck group to be round but I do want a wide deep round. I think that'll get me closer in the measurement. So you can see that this neck is three and three quarters and I'm after four and a quarter. Uh, and the arm, I don't have an armhole in what I'm doing. It has a cap sleeve so I want to go choose a cap sleeve that has a straight end to it and so I can build it like that. And then often I'll go to the display menu and ask to see both sides of the front as a joined unit because it's just a little easier to see what I'm working with. So this is getting me close already to the general basic shape. And then often what I like to do is to go in and set the hem length to be my desired length, which is 25 move that over there, which is 25 inches. And that just gets the visual proportions better for me. So now I have the basic shape of what I want. Uh, I don't have the sleeve yet, but I'll add that. And then I just start moving points around. So I've got my garment here. And if I want a neckline that's eight and a half, I'll start by pulling this down the shoulder seam a little until I get that to be eight and a half. So I'm gonna move it up. And sometimes I'll use my arrow keys to nudge as I'm going because it can get a little more finesse in what I'm doing. If I want the front neck depth to be four and a quarter, then I'm going to turn front back symmetry off. 
so that when I go to lower my front neck, I'm not lowering the back. And so I want to move this down. I'm using the arrow key again until I get to four and one quarter inches, which you can see right here. If I put my number over the dimensions, little arms reach out to show me what it's uh, giving me the dimensions for. Likewise, if I click on a segment, um, it will highlight this and I can again, it makes it easier to see. So now I have my neck depth correct, I have my neck width. I tend to work in a clockwise manner when I do most things. It can't always work that way, but it often does. Okay, so I decided that I want the width of my garment from the end of here to the center to be 14 inches. So I need to check that measurement. So often what I do, we have symmetry is on. I'm going to go turn front back symmetry on again. But basically, when I want to measure, I often hold down the S key because see how it temporarily turns symmetry off. So I'm just going to measure from the center front neck over to the tip here. And I'm measuring the width across there. And I can come down here and see that's 14 and a half. So that's good information. So that's telling me I just want to move this in about half an inch. And then I'll hold down the S key again to turn symmetry off and take a measurement. So that's 14. And I wanted this line to be six inches long. I'm going to hold it down again. I'm measuring that segment is seven one eight. So that means I've clicked on here and symmetry has allowed all of these to uh, be highlighted. And I'm just going to move this up until it's about six inches. Again, I'll hold down the S key and do a measurement. I'm at six and three eighths, so I can go up a little bit more. Hold the S key down. I'm at six, which is good. And then I want to grab this point and I'm going to pull this in a little because the measurement I wanted here um, is just a little bit less. And then I'm going to then grab my hem and hold the shift key as I move this straight out. And what I'm after is to have a full width of 34. Okay, and you're bound to get some warnings like this. Just suppress them for now, and we'll do a cross check when we're all done. So I am after a hem of 34 because I wanted it 17 down here. And we'll just keep going. Click again. Drag it out a little bit more, holding the shift key. So I'm 32, a little bit more, 34, and then I'm just going to nudge it back in. The reason I'm holding the shift key is so that it just goes straight out. And then I can decide if I like the look of this, I may want to move this in uh, a little bit. But this is generally getting me close. Now I can see my body sitting inside, and if I turn on the grid, I can see how much ease is allowed between the body and the pattern. And then I can decide if that's appropriate or if I want more ease or I can make further adjustments. So I'll go ahead and turn the grid off because it does get a little bit busy. I should save my file and give it an appropriate name. And we'll call this one Pima 2 because I did another version of it earlier. And so I have my front and my back. I don't really need both sides when it comes to the sewing pattern. But if I was going to knit this and put gauge in for knitting, I would want both sides on. Uh, okay, the only thing left for building the basic pattern pieces is to add my additional sleeve piece. Our cap sleeve is assumed that is the sleeve. So what I'm going to do is go to the extras menu and get a generic shape. And I'm going to ask for the squarish one. And then I will take probably the large square. And what I'm after is I need a rectangle that's going to measure 12 inches across. So I can get grab both of these sections here. And I'm pulling them out, holding the shift key. Well, I got a little carried away so until I get 6 and 6, which gives me the 12. So that 6 inches is going to fit into uh, this here, the, the length here. And then I want this to be seven and a half inches long, which is what I came up with. So that would be three and three quarters. So I'm going to grab this and nudge that up till I get the three and three quarters. And then I'll drag the bottom segments and nudge it down till I get the three and three quarters. 
And then I want the bottom of my sleeve to be just tapered a little bit. So I'm going to grab this and I'm moving these inward until the measurement becomes uh, 5 and 5, which will give me 10. And then I want to take this middle point here and pull it in. So there I pretty much finished all the pattern pieces. So now what I want to do is add hems and seam allowances so that I'm actually getting this ready for printing. So let's go ahead and get the pieces and turn off the right side. So we're looking at our half pattern pieces. So the first thing I want is hems. So if you go up to the additions, you'll see that these are dimmed. Uh, and that's because I haven't told it which seam line or which, you know, which part of the garment I actually want a hem on. So I'm going to select the bottom here I can then go to the additions and say add hem and if I want I can name it so I can say garment hem and I'm just going to give it a one inch hem and click OK. Notice that garment designer is smart enough to angle it inwards. I'm going to come then to the bottom of my sleeve go to the additions add hem and call this sleeve Again, make it be one inch, click OK, and then I want seam allowances. So usually how I do this is I go to the additions and turn on global seam allowances. I usually go for one half inch and it puts seam allowances everywhere. However, I want to remind it that I don't want a seam allowance on the center front and center back so that I remember to place these pattern pieces on the fold. So I select the center front and the center back and symmetry is helping me. And then I go to custom seam allowance and make it be zero and click OK. So now my pattern is basically ready to print. But before I do anything further, I want to check my information and recommendations to see if there's any problems with the pattern. So you go to the generate menu and you choose this. And if there's any problems, uh, they will usually be flagged in red. Now Garment Designer will measure a lot of your seams to make sure that they match. It will also check the angles where two pattern pieces meet to make sure that you have a nice transition. And this is where it has flagged a problem. It doesn't like the angle at the bottom side. And so what it's referring to is this angle right down here. But in this particular case, I'm going to say, well, I'm the designer, and that is exactly what I wanted it to be, so I will ignore you. There are times as designers we get to choose what we want and override the norm. And this garment does break some rules, but it's for fashion reasons. Okay, so I'm getting ready to print. The next step is to display the final pattern and this will add some notches that will help me match things better while I'm sewing. And then usually what I like to do, I'm going to print two things. I'm going to print a schematic and then I'm going to print the full scale pattern. So I will go to page setup and move my page setup into landscape mode and then go ahead and tell it to print uh, the pattern piece right here. And I won't print, but you get the idea. And so that will give me a nice schematic to put on the front of an envelope. And then I'm going to display scale to actual size. And unfortunately, you couldn't see all of that. And print preview, if it's not on, you go turn it on. And this will show you all the pagination so you know how many pages. So this is going to be 20 pages and uh, in landscape mode. I will often go into portrait mode to do a comparison. And there it's uh, 19, 20, well it's about the same. So I, I can choose which way I want to go. And I really often do turn off the dimensions because sometimes they make the pattern be a little bit bigger. Uh, so I think I am going to go and stay in landscape mode. I think I'm getting a better use of the paper. It's just 20 pages. And then the last thing I like to do is to display the grid and let the grid be part of the printout because it becomes grain lines. It helps me match up my pattern pieces better. So now I'm ready to print and I can tell it to print and it will tile all these pieces of paper and print them for me and I will tape them together as you'll see in just a moment. There are several other reports that I can print that I can add to my pattern envelope. So I can go to the Generate menu and ask for a project summary. And what this does is present all the style options that I chose and that will remind me later on what they were without having to be in the software. 
I can also ask to generate a sloper measurement chart. This brings the measurements up that I used for this project and I can also put this on the pattern envelope so I have a quick view as to the body measurements at the time that this pattern was created. And last, I might want to see how much fabric I'm going to need. So this would be, let me just close these, generate pattern layout. And ideally you have your seam allowances on or the software will remind you that you really should put your seam allowances on. So I played around earlier with this, but basically what you have here is a window where you can move pattern pieces around just like you would for a normal layout. You can press X, Y, and Z, just click on a piece. I'm going to flip this one up. And as you move it around, the software is calculating the yardage you need in width and in length. So typically for width, I'm going to presume a double fold of fabric. So I double this. So this would be 70 inches. Well, that's way too much. So maybe I want to bring this piece here and I can flip them left to right. So I've got my two pieces like this. And I can do my layout. And if I scoot down to the bottom, it will tell me in this pattern layout, I'm, it would need to be 56 inches wide and I'm going to need a yard and a half. Oops, got to move it down a little. Uh, you know, if I was willing to put a center back seam, I could flip that piece up. And I'll flip it again and flip it left to right and pressing X, Y, and Z again, remember. And I can just start seeing if I can make something slide in, you know, just for a better layout. Uh, let's turn this upside down so you can see I can crisscross there. I can move this up. But I would need 60 inch fabric and so maybe this is doable and I would need a yard and an eighth. So of course the pattern layout can be printed as well. So now you're seeing the patterns as they print out on regular printer paper. And at the top you will see column A and then pattern pieces A1, A2, A3. The second column of the pattern would be column B, 1, 2, 3. I like to trim off the right excess and the bottom and then leave the well on the left and the top. And then I start taping all the pattern pieces together. First I tape one column, then I tape the second column, then I tape the columns together. And when I'm done, I'll have a pattern piece that looks like this. I thought I'd share one of my favorite tools for taping the patterns together. There are various companies that make this, but you can find this particular one on Amazon. And now I want to share with you a little tip. I don't always print out both the front and the back. If the pattern is exactly the same front and back except for the neckline, then I will print out the back only, plus I'll print the one page that has the front neckline on. Then when I cut the garment, I cut two backs, and then while the back is still folded, the second back, I will lay the front neckline on the neck and cut the front neckline out of that second back. And that way I save paper by not printing as many pages and I can very easily just modify the neckline. So that completes this portion and we'll take a look at the garment. So here we have the finished garment minus hems. It's got beautiful drape. Here is my final pattern. My front of the pattern packet. The back of the pattern packet. And as you can see, we've gone from idea to pattern to a final garment. And the pattern making process was fun, simple, and quick. Have fun pattern making with Garment Designer.